Well, my name is David Robinson. I'm a career naval officer. I commanded two patrol gunboats. I commanded a, um, what we call a DDG, a guided missile destroyer. Uh, I had a short command tour on a cruiser when the uh, commanding officer had a heart attack and we had to take him off the ship in a, in a stretcher. And so I commanded that ship for about, uh, I think, eight weeks. And then I commanded uh, another cruiser, the, the Richmond K. Turner, uh, after that. And then I commanded what's called a battle group, uh, where we embarked uh, on a carrier and deployed with an entire battle group. But uh, I also commanded in that group uh, 45 ships and five um, destroyer squadrons. Uh, I was told by one of my staff members, I never verified this, but I was told by one of my staff members that I commanded the world's fifth largest navy uh, at that time. Oh, wow. But, <laughs> but, um, but oddly uh, enough, maybe not oddly, but interestingly enough, one of the ships that was in that group was the uh, battleship Wisconsin. Uh, she had been brought back uh, out of mothballs. There were four of those who were, that were brought out of mothballs, and two of them, the Iowa and the Wisconsin, were in my group. They were built towards the end. It was the Iowa-class battleship, a beautiful uh, uh, ship in its own right, probably the last classic-looking uh, uh, Navy combatant uh, in the world. Uh, they were built towards the end of World War II, and they served through Korea. They had uh, phenomenal 16-inch guns, and, and of course, the Missouri uh, was a ship that, uh, that hosted the surrender of the Japanese in uh, Tokyo Harbor at the end of the war. Uh, and then um, they, uh, I think they were around until probably the mid-60s, and then they were very expensive, and they used the, uh, the old black oil, the old uh, heavy oil that, that the Navy was getting away from, and they required a lot, of, uh, a, a lot of manpower. So they were put into mothballs, uh, but they were brought out again um, towards, uh, for the Vietnam uh, War, and then they were put back in mothballs and brought out again uh, for the uh, for the initial Iraqi war in, uh, in the uh, 1990 time frame. Well, the first and the, and the love of my career was the USS Cannon. Uh, Cannon was, uh, uh, hull number was PG-90. I was the second commanding officer in Cannon. The um, ship was in San Diego. I took command in San Diego late, uh, I think, November of 69. Uh, and we worked the ship up. We went through training there, and um, uh, then we transited across the Pacific to Guam, where we changed our home port uh, to Guam, the U.S. territory in the Marianas Islands. And then we would uh, forward deploy to Vietnam from Guam. Uh, so we had our families in Guam, and then we would go to Vietnam for deployments and then come back to Guam. The patrol gunboat was a brand new class of ship in our Navy, uh, a very small ship, about 155, 160 feet long, about 250 tons. The ships were built for speed, uh, for the interdiction mission, that is, interdicting um, a logistic supply by enemies up and down the coastline, uh, in rivers, that type of thing. Uh, they were not sea kind. They were sea worthy, but they were not sea kindly, and they just bobbed like a cork. And it's not unusual in a in a, in a medium sea to be rolling uh, 40 to 45 degrees because they were so light. They had an aluminum hull and a uh, fiberglass superstructure. They had a very unique engineering plant. Up until that time, all our surface ships. Uh, primarily steam-driven, uh, either uh, a steam reciprocating engine or a steam turbine. And so a lot, um, 
uh, carried a lot of fuel and they had boilers, the boilers made steam and the steam drove the, uh, the turbines and, the, and then that's how you got your propulsion. Um, in the PGs, they were a combination gas turbine or uh, diesel engine. And so you could use one or the other. You could use the, the uh, gas turbine for speed and the ship would go up to 40 knots, about 45 miles an hour. Or you could use the diesels and the diesels would propel the ship at about 12 knots, 12 to 13 knots. And of course the diesels used much less fuel than the, uh, than the turbine. Uh, the ships, I said, were small, a crew of about 33, and a lot of, uh, um, a lot of one-off rates, if you will. I mean, I had uh, six engineers because of the engineering plan. I had two gunner's mates, uh, but most of the rest of the crew was one each, uh, one raiderman, one cook, one radioman, things of that nature. So we really got top of the, uh, top of the uh, talent uh, because each of those sailors had to be very, very good at what they did. And then we had, I think, maybe six non-rated people and a total of four officers. And so we took Cannon over. Uh, our first tour over there, uh, we got into several, uh, well, I would think, significant firefights. Uh, operating up and down a river in, in uh, South Vietnam. It was the, um, we were supporting a um, activity called Sea Float. Sea Float was a uh, anchored command center out in the middle of the Kulon River down south. And we would enter uh, from the Bode River on the, um, on the eastern shore. And then the Bode and the Kulon met uh, inland there, and that was our mission, was to support sea float. Uh, and then, as I said, we got into several firefights with, um, uh, with the Viet Cong down there. They would attack from the shore, very close in to the shore. Um, and then um, on, on one of those, I was wounded. And uh, so I was, uh, I was evacuated, medically evacuated, and um, my executive officer uh, took command of the ship and he brought the ship back to Guam. Of course, I had flown back to Guam in a, uh, in a medical aircraft. And, and so the ship uh, and I were mending together. Uh, my leg uh, was coming back together and the ship was being put back together and we were getting ready to deploy again to Vietnam. Uh, and I went over for a checkup, not uh, maybe two or three weeks before we were to, uh, to get underway. And the doctor told me that he had changed his mind and my leg was not fit for sea duty and I couldn't go. And I said, you don't understand. He said, no, <laughs> Lieutenant Commander, I understand very well. You don't understand. So I went back to see my Commodore and uh, told him the, the problem. And there was another uh, change of command getting ready to happen in Vietnam on another ship, the Ready, PG-87. And so uh, the Commodore said, well, we'll have that officer come relieve you, and then you can go relieve the ready because it was a little bit of a, uh, of a fib, if you will. I called the doctor and said, well, if I can't take a ship to Vietnam, could I go over there and pick up a ship and then bring it back to Guam? He said, sure. Uh, I, I didn't tell him that we had two or three months left on that deployment over in, in, <laughs> in Vietnam. So that's why I got a second command. Uh, in the PGs was simply for, you might call it doctor's orders. 